And now for something completely different. I have a little bit of time between uh, radios here. I thought, hey, maybe you'd all like to see my Geiger counter. Now, you may be aware that I live very close to a nuclear power station. In fact, I live just about as close as you can get to one of the world's biggest and oldest nuclear power stations called the Pickering Nuclear Plant. Jump on Google and check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. And I live just outside the one kilometer exclusion zone. Not that one kilometer is very, very far at all to be from something like that. Uh, eight uh, reactor buildings, uh, six reactors operating at that station right now. So, would it be so surprising that I would have a Geiger counter? Yes, I have a Geiger counter. Um, I think a friend of mine gave me this. He had a couple of them he picked up at a flea market or something like that. So I thought maybe you get a kick out of looking at this, at this guy. So first of all, shame on me, years ago I dropped it and I broke the handle off of it. And that's why there's this hole here. I've glued it back, it's glued on. So I can go out and check out for uh, for any radiation. So we'll just look this over. I'll show it to you. Here it says modified CDV7IO. Um, don't know what that CD number. Don't know what that is. Serial number. There's a serial number on it. I think these were manufactured by the tens and maybe even hundreds of thousands of these. Um, these aren't regular Geiger counters. Oh, here's a warning. Prevent corrosion. Remove all batteries when not in use. Well, how often is this thing in use? I mean, it's never in use. Um, so theoretically, you would never have batteries in it. And there you are, the, the civil defense uh, sticker, the American civil defense sticker. Things were a lot different down in the States than here in Canada. Uh, while these things were proliferating and being placed in all kinds of uh, fallout shelter locations and all kinds of stuff, Canada just took no actions. Um, I was a young kid in the 60s and uh, the whole nuclear scare, Russia's gonna bomb you, just, just wasn't echoing that loudly here in Canada even though even though I watched a lot of American television and uh, things like that. So, so I don't think there's anything like this in Canada. What's it say here? It says FCDA item number uh, blah 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 modification number five Victorine model 710B. So that's really the name of this guy, the Victorine. Victor Victorine. Are they trying to make a play on the idea that if you were using this thing, you were somehow victorious? Victorine. I don't know. I don't know. If you're using this, I don't think there's too much victory coming. The Victor, oh, Victorine Instrument Company. So that's the name of the company. So uh, I'm sure it wasn't a play. Cleveland, Ohio. Then here's the settings on it. First one is uh, circuit check. And a zero. And then a zero adjust. And then it reads. Scale times 100. Scale times 10. Scale times 1. And the uh, scale itself is in rem per hour. Pretty sure it's r slash hour. So I'm pretty sure that's rem per hour. So full scale would be half a rem per hour. Now, half a rem per hour. We'll have to think about that for a little bit. So open this, this guy up and find out what kind of fantastic technology is inside of it. There isn't an awful lot in there to see. Now you put in two one and a half volt batteries. I feel a nuclear emergency coming on, so let's put in the batteries here. Like that. This one goes this way. And not very snug, but they're in there. And look, there's a little circuit diagram here. Okay, so if we take a good look at the circuit diagram, 
you'll see there is a vacuum tube in there. And I think I draw your attention to this thing right here, this circle. It says plus and minus on it. No, I don't want to show you the circle. Uh, what I want to, that's the meter movement. I want to show you this thing here. The, the, this is the part here. Oh, yeah, that comes into focus. Come on, little camera. Okay, there it is. And now it's in focus. And it's upside down. But if you read the word there, it says chamber. Chamber. And it just looked like it looked, kinda, it looked a little like like a tube diagram. You can see a line kind of going in the middle of a well chamber. Okay, and that that's this part right here. It's all soldered, solder sealed. So what's in here is nothing more than a wire sticking in space inside here. And this is given a, the outside can here is given a voltage, and the wire is given a, a different voltage, so there's a potential difference between the, the, uh, the wire that's inside and, uh, and the can. And that's it. That's what's going on there. Not, not much more happening. Put a little voltage on it. You can see that the, uh, grid of this tube is connected to the wire that's inside the chamber. Is that focusing in for you? So what happens here is a uh, atomic particle comes flying in. Here it comes. Here it comes on the end of my finger. Goes through the can and disappears. While it's in the can, inside the can, it'll ionize some of the air that's inside here. I'm pretty sure this is just that atmospheric pressure. I don't think it's evacuated or anything. It's just regular air inside this, I think, even though it's all sealed here. And when that particle goes through, it creates a certain amount of uh, ions in the air, and those ions begin to conduct a little bit, and that small conduction uh, changes the current flow in the wire between the can and the wire and that's right on the grid of the tube so the tube gives a little bit of a oomph at the meter and I'm pretty sure there's a capacitor in there somewhere too so each time one of those particles phoom, through the can the meter will tick up tick and then start relaxing again and based on how many of those particles are shooting through there this meter will end up higher and higher on the scale now, here's the thing, okay, Th this scale is reading pretty high, I think. Uh, rems per hour. I, I should really look at what, you know, what is a safe uh, exposure. In fact, you know, I'm going to stop right at the moment, and I'm just going to study up quickly on what a safe exposure is, because I'm very suspicious about this. Hey, let's see if this thing's working. There we go, battery check. Hmm. Yeah. Zero check. Okay, it's on zero. Scale time 100. Quite certain you will see nothing here at all. Uh, my nuclear plant is not on fire, and uh, I don't think you'll see anything happen with this at all. Nothing. Even though there certainly are gamma ray particles shooting through that can, a few other things here and there going through it, it's not enough to uh, set this thing off at all. So we'll switch it off. I'm going to do a little research and, and try to find out just uh, what a safe exposure. Okay, so I'm, I'm just reading right on my computer screen here. Um, the people who have the highest limit 
for radiation are astronauts because you know once they get out of the atmosphere it's there's a lot of radiation out in space and their exposure limit is 25,000 millirems so that'd be 25,000 thousandths of a millirem or thousandth of a rem so that'd be 25 rems and what is that per year yeah that's per year 25,000 millirems per year was the federal occupational limit during World War II and until about 1950 for radiation workers and soldiers exposed to radiation the occupational limit then became 15,000 and 57 it was lowered to 5,000 so 5,000 millirems per year so what's that mean? That's mean? that means that you could stand next to a source See, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not an expert in this, so just take all this with a grain of salt. I can have this totally wrong because there's the concept of what it is you're being hit with and then the concept of what you're collecting or being exposed to over time. And I'm not sure if REM takes time into account. So I'm going to suggest that it doesn't and carry on with my talk here. Um, so where would five where where would this meter have to read if you are at five thousand millirems per year? Oh man, I'm gonna have to get a calculator out to do this. We'll just do this as quickly as we can though. So five thousand millirems per year, and this thing's calibrated per hour. Rems. So full scale on this guy is um, 0.5 rems per hour. Okay, so 0.5 rems per hour would be 12 rems per day. 12 rems per day, and you just have to multiply that by 360. 12 times 360. Well, let's say 10 times 400 that's 4,000 rems per year 4,000 rems per year and the limit is roughly one thousandth of that okay so did I get all this right um, typically if this meter made it up to the top you'd be looking at an exposure that's a thousand times greater than what the government says you should get uh, for industry. Okay. Now, what, where am I going with all this? Well, I am going to try to make a point. I'm going to try to make this point. And I'd be interested in anybody who might have varying points on this. This meter is so insensitive that you could take it outside in a dangerous radiation field and get a reading down near the bottom here, if at all, and it would lead you to think it's pretty safe. So, yeah, I hate to even suggest this because it's a bad thing to even suggest that, that these meters were really designed to encourage people to get back to work <laughs> after the bombs flew. Go outside and, and say, hey, everything's great. I think I, I think I broke a clip off it while we were talking about it here. Son of a gun. Isn't that too bad? <laughs> now I need to fix it. I have no way of testing this in my house. I have no radiation sources to test it against. I've tried a few stupid things. I've tried uh, um, an old watch face. Um, and I've tried a... Uh, um, smoke detector yeah, I didn't take it apart I didn't try to expose the radioactive component I just held it up near the smoke detector nothing 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 ever this probably does work um, but I have no way of testing it so thank God I have no way of testing it <laughs> but you know what if you're gonna live near a nuclear power plant maybe you want one of these I think you'd want a tester that first of all makes a click that you can hear this one doesn't do that. Hey, you know, I could fool around with this maybe and, and make it uh, 
put a speaker on it. Yeah, that'd be fun to do sometime, eh? That would be kind of neat. And uh, make uh, hear the clicks. That's the first thing you'd want. And secondly, you need one that's a lot more sensitive. And you can certainly buy them these days as kits, and they're much smaller than this. And they will read background radiation. And I think you need to see the meter show you the background radiation. It's a little like hearing the noise in a shortwave radio. Um, the noise, that atmospheric type noise, it's reassuring that if you can detect the floor of things, you can detect things above the floor. Whereas I would be quite worried that this thing, uh, you know, if they dropped a nuclear bomb, let's say on Toronto, that I'd be out in my front yard going, hey everybody, it's clear. <laughs> Come on out, let's get back to work. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I th thought you might enjoy that little tour of my civil defense meter.